airbrush paints. They're designed with only one thing in mind, putting them through your airbrush. These paints have specifically been formulated to run smoothly through any airbrush without any thinning. And this makes them so much easier to use in your airbrush. And that's why today I'm going to show you how to use airbrush paints without the airbrush. Welcome to using a product in the way it was not intended to be used. And yes, I'm going to show you exactly how to use airbrush paints with your paintbrush because you don't have to use these paints through an airbrush only. As previously mentioned in one of my recent videos, Army Painter had sent me their brand new airbrush painting set. And I must say, these paints run through the airbrush extremely well. However, today, I'm going to show you how to use them without the airbrush. Imagine that. Oh, Mr. Ground Effected, can you um, show these people how to use these airbrush paints and uh, the best way to use airbrush with these airbrush paints? Sure, Mr. Army Painter, I will show them exactly how to use the airbrush paints, but not with the airbrush. So I guess, let's just jump right into it. Right, I know that this isn't a miniature painting channel, however, I'm going to paint miniatures from time to time. I feel like painting miniatures is something that can give you skills that you can translate later onto bigger models. Because if you can do it at this small scale, you're definitely going to be able to do it on a much larger scale and it's going to feel so much easier. So for painting this model, what I did was I chose to use a simple technique. I was testing how fast I can get this particular one done. Using Omega Blue, I took a rough dry brush and I wiped off most of the paint from the brush and I basically stabbed this paint onto the model and I just kept stabbing, stab, stab, stab. I try to keep these stabs to come from a certain direction, mainly from directly in the front, directly at the back and straight down from the top. I tried not to go anywhere from the bottom up because I wanted to keep the black in the deepest recesses. This is a pretty easy way of getting a good coverage without losing any of the darkest black that's in the recesses of the model. So using this technique, you can get a really fast coverage and it makes a really great texture on the armor as well. I also dropped this model a couple of times, which try not to do that. Very crudely, I mixed the Sapphire Gem and the Omega Blue. I literally just stabbed my brush into the light blue, stabbed it into the dark blue, rubbed it off onto my tissue. And again, I stabbed at the model, this time stabbing more only from the top and on the highest points where the light would be hitting the top of that model. Or at least where the light would be reflecting the most on parts of the model that are more exposed to the light. And as you can see, the textures start to come out really nicely. It's a really great looking texture, especially if you're trying to get something done really quick and fast. Being a little bit more specific and only using the Sapphire Gem, I'm going to place this onto the highest points now, absolute end of the highlight. This is pretty much as high as the highlights will go on most of this armor. However, we will use some edge highlighting later to go even higher than this in value. I used greedy gold and I painted all the emblems and the bits on the shoulder pads. For this I just did two to three thin coats over the top just to make sure that the gold was nice and smoothly saturated. Making sure to go into all the cracks and over each edge to make sure that this was as tidy as possible. The paint itself goes down pretty well. It is quite thin, particularly because it is an airbrush paint, but we can use that to our advantage and this helps us to get some higher points and lower points in the value. The value is how light or dark the color appears to your eye. And so two layers of this gold might have perhaps a higher value than what one layer would have, especially going straight over the blue. I used black and I went back and base coated the weapons once again just because some of the blue had gotten onto the weapons. I also used that same black to get all the little gaps in between the armor so these parts of the suit that probably aren't necessarily painted they might be rubber or something in between. I then used bulwark brown in two or three coats over the pouches and the pistol holster. I had to use a couple layers, again because I'm controlling the paint, I prefer working in this way anyway.
I then used flesh wash and I came in and I washed the emblem and all the other golden parts. This was to give it a nice orangish sort of tint in the recesses and the shadows to help really make it look like a convincing gold. I used that same wash to wash over the pouches and the holster. This is just to give some depth and add a little bit of shape to those parts as well. Now I went back in and I used that sapphire gem and I slowly started picking out a few of the areas that I wanted to bring out the value and make the contrast a little bit more stronger. I used the dark silver to catch a couple of the parts on this backpack and I used that same greedy gold to get the butt end of the sword. Using shining silver, now I know this isn't an airbrush paint, but let's be real here, I'm not going to have every single paint as an airbrush paint. I used this as a dry brush, and I just used this over the weapons, very carefully dry brushing all over the edges, just to try to bring out some of the metallic look. I mixed a little bit of black into that bulwark brown, and I then went back into the pouches and gave them a couple of scuffs and scratches just to add some more texture to these parts so they weren't as boring. Using a super thin brush, this is my quadruple zero brush from Windsor & Newton. I used a fairly thin down white and I placed this onto the inside of the visors of the eyes. This is to give me a good base to put down the red later on. Adding white into the blue now, I chose to add white into the omega blue as opposed to the sapphire gem to try to slightly desaturate the highlights a bit here. This is something I want to stand out from the model. And I'm going to just go over all the spots that the light would hit in my mind. So if it was an edge, I went over it because the light would hit that edge. And it's supposed to be a metal robot spaceman dude. I use consistently brighter versions of this white. So using this white mixed with the blue helps me to build this up over time. So I can build these layers up even on the edges and on the edge highlighting and things like that. I'm still going to build up this layer of paint. It's never going to be just one layer and we're done. Um, building it up this way helps you to create more volume and make more saturation in the piece. It also helps to create a lot more contrast and contrast is something that creates more enjoyment for your eye and something more interesting to look at. I continued to build this up bit by bit. I kept going to the highest point and going deeper and deeper into the white. You can see the white's getting stronger and stronger as I go along. It is quite a cartoony look, but it looks pretty badass on these kind of models. You can see me highlight bits on the pouches as well. And then you can see me using the red on the inside of the visors. I'm pretty sure I did two layers of this red, even though it is quite a bright red over the top of white. It still worked out really well. This is a pinline wash that I'm going to use on the whole model. This wash is enamel based and it works very differently to how a normal acrylic based wash works. It flows a lot quicker and easier into gaps. In order to control this you can use white spirit and you can come back later and wipe some of this off so you can give it a few minutes to dry and come back later and wipe some of the flatter areas off so that you haven't damaged the whole area and completely darkened it with the wash. But what's really great about this wash is that it grimes the model up without pooling all over the place like a general acrylic wash can tend to do. Once that had all dried, I then used decal set and I'm going to stick some of the decals that I have from the plastic kits onto these prints. I used the decal set at first, I place it onto the body, dip the decal straight into my water cup. And I'll take the decal very carefully and place it onto the arm. Now I've kept a lot of this in here because I want you guys to see how long it takes to fiddle with particularly a decal over a curved object. I'm pretty sure if you watch any video on painting a space marine, they're going to say the exact same thing. Getting that decal to roll around that shoulder pad, honest to God, is something that takes patience. But what you'll see that I do is I tend to get it as flat as I possibly can. And then I take the decal set and I rub it back over the top very carefully. This slowly starts to break down the decal. This helps it to bend and slightly twist and almost shrink in places. So once you've done that, it will adhere to the contours and you can get, eventually get it placed and stuck down and pressed into place. Now to work on the base, I'm going to use this weapon bronze 
and I'm going to use a mixture of this on the base. So starting off with the weapon bronze and then using a shining silver, I'm going to wet blend these two paints together. That means I'm just going to paint with my paintbrush straight with the bronze and sometimes pick up some of the silver, sometimes pick up some of the bronze and I'm just going to kind of rub them together. They will make their own blends and make kind of like a weird color in the in-between, which looks really great. We are going to wash this down though because it's way too bright. It's like this guy's walking around on a piece of jewelry. Using the flesh wash, I'm going to come back in. This is going to be my first layer of washes and I'm going to place that all over the entire base. For this I want to get in all the crevices as well as to lay on the top of the surfaces. I then will take some of that shining silver again and I'm going to dry brush it back over the top. This is going to help bring back some of that color that we lost by adding the wash. Using some red, I'm going to highlight a little bit of the... What are those called? Using a bit of red, I'm going to highlight these purity seals. And then I'm going to go back to the pen wash again. And I'm going to place this into more specifically the deeper details on this base. Again, like I said, the way that this wash works, it falls into the cracks and it doesn't sit on the surface as bad. This is a great way to add more depth to the base. And then I'm going to take a black and I'm going to paint that all the way around the rim because you must always paint your base's rim. If you don't do that, you're not even modeling at the end of the day. And you'd think we're done at this point, wouldn't you? No, sir, we are not done. We're going to make this guy look just like he's been walking through the dirtiest of battlefields. And I'm going to take this Burnt Rust Red Pigment Powder from AK Interactive. I'm not going to lie, I have no idea how to use this stuff. So the way that I use it, I take a little bit of water and I dampen the brush and then I dip it into the pigment powders and I just sort of stab that onto the model, just like I painted the base coats. And basically I take my time and I go all over where I think there would be dust and I add a little bit of dust, blowing it off, adding more dust, blowing it off. It slowly but surely starts to set. And so, as you can see, that you don't need an airbrush to use airbrush paints. These airbrush paints can be used as normal paints. And that's one of the things that I like about paints like this. At the end of the day, paints are merely just pigments suspended in a liquid. At the end of the day, I don't think it matters what the label says on the bottle. You use your paints how you best see fit. And this video has proved that these airbrush paints have more versatility than just being airbrush paints. We're at that point of the video where I need to thank some patrons, as well as mention the new ones that we have in the last week. First one is Andy Kelly, and the second one is Milen Kunchev. I've probably butchered all of that, and as we know, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that your support is greatly appreciated and I would love for you to join the Patreon and jump into the Discord and start getting help with your next projects. We've started building a truly amazing community over on Discord and with our Patreons. So if you'd like to be a part of that community, now is the time to click in the description and join. Or don't and miss out, that's up to you. But also, I'd like to say, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and consider giving us a subscription. As I say, every subscription I get, I will have one more subscriber. Also, as we all know, if you don't like this video, wait. As we know, if you don't like this video, then just f*** off.